So question 12 is when we get to a piecewise function. Notice that we have a function that's defined by three different functions. So the function is defined as follows. We want to complete parts A through D below. So notice how the function is equal to x plus 4. But we only use this function if the domain is between negative 3 and 1, including negative 3, but not including 1. f of x equals 8. The only time we use this function, the constant function, is if x is equal to 1. So if the domain is 1, then we're going to use this function. And then the third function, the third piece, if you will, is the opposite of x plus 2. We're only going to use this function if x is greater than 1. So notice that as far as the domain goes, the left bound is negative 3. We don't include 1, but notice how this does include 1. And then notice how it says greater than 1. So it looks like there is a left bound of negative 3, but we are going to include it, so that's got to be a bracket. But then we just go to negative infinity. I'm sorry. Going to the right, that'd be a positive infinity. The right bound would be a positive infinity. So it's got to be an open bound there. So the next question says, locate any x intercepts or y intercepts. So if I want to set, if I want to find y intercepts, I have to set y equal to zero and so and solve for x. So If we want to do this, we can set x plus 4 equal to 0 and solve for x, and we get x equals negative 4. So notice, though, the domain is between negative 4 and 1, so that doesn't really fit. That's outside the domain, so I can't use that one. The only, I can't even really solve, I can't set 8 equal to 0, so this function, I can't even set y equal to 0. The third one I have, the opposite of x plus 2 is equal to 0, so it's going to be the opposite of x equals uh, negative 2, and then divide both sides by negative 1, x equals 2, and that does fit within the domain restriction there, so we do see that there is a an x-intercept of 2, 0. To find the y-intercept, we have to set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So if I set x equal to 0, or if I set x plus 4 equal to y, if you will, if I replace x to 0, we get a 0 plus 4 equals y, so y would equal 4. And I'll set 0 does fit within this guy's domain. Notice that the other ones, you can't use x equals 0 because it does not fit within the, the domain intervals. So 0 only fits into this first interval. So I can only use this first function here. So the y-intercept has to be then this um, 0, 4. So C says graph the function. So the first function, x plus 4, is a line. But all we could do is graph the part that's from negative 3 to 1. So what I can do is identify those two endpoints. So when x is negative 3, you're going to get negative 3 plus 4 would be 1. So that would be, so when x is negative 3, you had 1 for the y value. And since negative 3 is part of the domain, we're going to see that. So negative 3, 1, this looks pretty good here. All of them kind of do to sundry on that part. So, so one of the water pairs we're seeing is if I'm graphing the line y equals x plus 4, we're going to see that negative 3, 1 would be 1 in point. And then if I substitute 1 in on the other side, I'm going to have 1 plus 4 is going to be 5. So 1, 5 
it's going to be that in point, but notice how this is going to be open and this is going to be closed. So I need an open circle on one end and a closed circle on the other end. So one five, it looks like this one does pretty good there. So does this one. Not this one or this one. So right now we're down to these two choices just for graphing that. So the other one is one eight is a point. So one eight is a point. That looks about right. One eight. That looks good. One eight. So that looks pretty good for those two. The last thing is we have this negative x plus two. So to graph y equals negative x plus two, again, we can pick the left bound, which is going to be the one. If I put one in, that's going to be the opposite of one is a negative one plus two. Negative one plus two is going to be a one. So one went in, one came out. Notice how that's going to be open. So one, one, that's going to show this one more so because this one's kind of showing one, five. So this one's kind of showing. And notice how if I pick another point, um, say two, that's going to give me a zero. Two, zero looks like this one's doing that. So this looks like the graph that's doing what we want to do is that one. So D, based on the graph, find the range and then select the choice below and fill the, the, the answer boxes to complete the choices. So notice how this graph does go down. So we do have this negative infinity going on, but notice how they're wanting a A little bit of a little bit of a combination of stuff here. So interval notation. Notice that the lower bound is negative infinity, and notice that the graph keeps on going up until I get to this. Uh, looks like this five, and then it's open into there. So it looks like from negative infinity to five, and notice that five is open. Would be that interval. But then there's this little lone point up there by itself, which is the eight. So it also just has this one little y value, which is the eight. So it has an interval, and then it has a point. So the range has at least one isolated value. That's the eight, and can be described as the union of these intervals. So it's going to be the union of this interval and this isolated point. That's how we would describe the range of that. So we actually didn't have to use any commas here on ours.